Oh, good morning, everybody. This is Dr. Novak. Welcome to my channel. Uh, it's morning. I have a little sip of coffee. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show a couple of, uh, at the end, I'll show a couple of tanks that people have sent me. People have been sending me emails. They've been sending me pictures of their aquarium. Uh, one aquarium uses uh, plenum, and the other one uh, does not. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, why would I show an aquarium that doesn't use a plenum? Well, uh, I guess that's a little funny to people because people will ask me, like, uh, I have uh, just a normal tank set up, and uh, I wanted to know if I should switch it over, you know, to a plenum. And I asked him, I said, are you having success with what you're using? Well, yeah. Don't switch it over. Use what you got. It makes sense, right? Why change something if it ain't broke, as they say, right? Uh, so... If you do have tanks and they do not use plenums, so what? People ought to see it. People ought to get uh, ideas from other people of what they've done, whether you use a plenum or don't use a plenum. You know, this, this, this YouTube channel is not about I'm right, they're wrong, they're wrong, I'm right, they're right, I'm wrong. It's, it's not about that. It's about being successful with keeping fish tanks, aquariums. That's what this channel is about. It doesn't matter how you do it. Uh, if you're successful, then shouldn't we let other people know your success? You know, I, I know that may sound a little weird because I know on other channels, they only advocate what they're doing. But uh, that's not what this channel is about. If you want to use and make a plenum or BCB baskets or anything like that, that's entirely up to you. But uh, so I am going to show a couple different aquariums for you at the end. Uh, one thing I wanted to talk about, which has been brought up to me, is, uh, and this has been brought up more than once, where people have said, oh, he talks like he invented the under gravel filter or all he's doing is stealing Schober's uh, idea of a plenum. Wait, wait, wait a second. Let's put the cart behind the horse. Schober stole his idea from under gravel filters. Under gravel filters were around decades before he came up with an idea of just taking an under gravel filter and removing the uplift tube. That's basically what a plenum is, an under gravel filter without an uplift tube. That's all he came up with. So he stole his idea from under gravel filters. And if you ask any heating and air conditioning expert, they will tell you that's absolutely right. All a plenum is and all an under gravel filter is is a plenum they're both the same it's the same exact thing because an under gravel filters were designed to have a void underneath a plastic plate therefore that was your plenum the problem with under gravel filters why people hated them is by the time they start going out of favor, it's because of the fact they start getting uglier. I mean, a 55-gallon tank would have four uplift tubes all the way up to the top, spilling bubbles on the tank. They really got to be ugly in an aquarium. Before, they had a little 6-inch, 3 8 uplift tube, and that was it. Then they came up with a little add-on piece that you can add on to it, put a little carbon in it, 
But before that piece was even made, that's all they had. That's all under gravel filters had. They were basically a plenum. So Schobert got his idea from under gravel filters, which were plenums. He just called it something different and removed the little tube that was in them. All I did was take the under gravel filter and said, wait a second, they were unsightly. We need to go back to what we used because they did work. But they became to be an eyesore. I mean, really, those who didn't live through that time period, they were a big eyesore. They were like, you have to be joking. A 55-gallon tank had these big one-inch tubes, four of them, in your aquarium. They were, they were horrible looking. Let's face facts. No wonder people didn't want them anymore. It's just the same like with the hang-on-the-back filter that we used to use. We had very good hang-on-the-back filters. The motors, like the Supreme motor, they were gray. They had little oil slots in them for your motor. Once a year, you could oil them. Those things last forever. Those things could get rusty, and they would just keep running and running and running and running. Okay? There was no thought about, oh, how much uh, electricity they used. It wasn't until Dynaco came out, and they had a hang on the back filter, and they literally had the impeller with a magnet on it and the motor with a magnet on it, and you slid them together and the magnets lined up and one magnet spun the other magnet. And they were a little smaller and they hung on the back and they only had one tube going into the filter. That was about uh, the best you could do. It was green. But otherwise, with the filters that they made from uh, Supreme and other manufacturers, depending on their speed, you either had two of these big one-inch tubes that were bent to start a siphon, or you had four of them. And imagine if you had a big aquarium with 30 fish and you had two of these in your tank, you had these one-inch tubes. You could have as many as eight one-inch tubes from your hang on the back filters. They were horrible looking, but that's what we had. But they did the job very efficiently, better than today's hang on the back filters. They actually cleaned, polished your water, and grew bacteria better than the filters we have today. There was no way for anything to go bypass through the filter medium. And if it slowed down, it still worked. Where today's hang on the back, if they begin to clog up, they have a bypass, just like they do with ponds, and you're not filtering anything out of your aquarium anymore if you don't keep an eye on it. Because they made it so you just slide little filter elements in and out, or uh, they have other ways of, of cages and stuff, but they did it for convenience. And now there's only one tube going into your aquarium it could because the motor's connected up to that tube and it's not unsightly. Then they have a spillover into the aquarium. You know, that's how it was. But I could see where those hang on the back filters, they were, let's face it, ugly. You couldn't wait to get a canister filter to hide all those tubing. And the undergravel filter was, was horrible with the big, huge one-inch tubes. Any any old-timer will tell you that. They, they were not pretty in your aquarium, and you had to try to hide them with uh, plants or something else or, or uh, aquascaping the, the whole thing somehow with uh, tree branches or, or rocks or things like that. Uh, you know, so... I don't know why people keep saying that. I didn't steal anybody's ideal. I'm just showing you the right way to do something. Schober has his way of doing it, called it a plenum. But actually, an undergravel filter was a plenum. Like I said, any heating and air conditioning guy will tell you that. It's a plenum. That's what it is. 
under gravel filters were plenums. So he actually stole his whole idea from under gravel filters that were a long, that were around a long, long time, decades before he came up with his idea of a plenum. That's why I use the word plenum. The under gravel filter is the plate you are using. Underneath that plate is a void. That void is your plenum. Okay, and those have been around, I think, since the 40s, where people were using under gravel filter plates to mimic that of sewage treatment facilities. That's what they were doing. It's just that as time went on, they became unsightly. All I did, because I owned my own business and did my own research with my own consulting business, I did my research and I said, hey, let's go back to the old way of doing things and see if we can improve the under gravel filter that we used to use because I think we're using it wrong or we used it wrong and then it became an eyesore. And imagine this eyesore, you could, you could have a 55 gallon tank and you can eliminate two of the tubes by putting power heads, okay? And they give you caps to cap up where the your tubes would go. So you could have now one tube on one side, one tube on the other side. But then you had this big power head, the big old clunky power head sitting on top of these tubes blown in the tank. I mean, people, it, 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 if you didn't live through that time period, it was a very, very ugly time period for aquariums. And believe me, I can see why people couldn't wait to get rid of that garbage. I can see where it just got, because cleaning them wasn't a problem. I mean, they invented, you know, where you can go in there and uh, uh, Python came up with, uh, you know, the tube and the, and the filter uh, gravel cleaner. And well, what's so hard about that? You do that today. You do that today. You use a gravel cleaner to clean out your gravel. Well, that's what you did back then. But it was so unsightly. And I could see where it, enough was enough. You know, you put any power heads on. Then I remember they came up with stronger power heads and power heads that pumped over 400 and, you know, 50 gallons an hour. And, and I mean, it, it just, they got bigger. Not like today where you buy smaller and smaller power heads. Uh, no, the power heads got bigger, clunkier. You had to hang them on the back. You, I mean, oh my God, it, it was, it was terrible. So for those people who think, oh, I just stole Schober's idea. Well, Schober stole his idea from old time aquariums and under gravel filter plates because I have books and everything on under gravel filter plates long, long before Schober came out with the plenum. And basically, I wanted to make sure you understand that, that Schober actually stole his idea from under gravel filters. They were around first. And people would sometimes not run their under gravel filters and run them as a plenum because they didn't want, let's say, the bubble noise. So they would stop the bubbles. And I remember seeing that. And, and you would see the tubing, no bubbles coming out. Or sometimes you'd see the tubing and the bubbles would barely be coming out. Well, they were running it the way they were supposed to, or there would be no bubbles. Well, if they if you stop the bubbles coming out, then you have what Schobert would call a plenum. Well, that was already around before he even came up with the idea. Okay, so that's all I'm showing you is after I researched it a little bit and found out we did it right and we messed it up and doing it wrong. So anyhow, I just wanted to bring that up because a lot of people say, oh, I stole Schober's idea. I just have redefined what the under gravel filter was, which was a plenum. 
And I just then called it a slow moving plenum because that's what it is. And just have the bubbles go slower like they used to do just to move fluids very slowly. And you're guaranteed to move fluids very slowly. Anyhow, that's it for this. Stay tuned. I'm going to show a couple of people's aquariums. And uh, I want to thank you for watching. Okay. The first tank up is Tom's tank. Uh, it was set up in August. It's a, a simple marina 10-gallon tank using a small sponge filter. He uses a paintball CO2, uh, so it's CO2 injected, and he's using black diamond sand substrate. He's using a Nicru LED light. Uh, I looked it up I, probably from Amazon. The, the light for a tank like this would be about $21. But it seems to be doing the trick for that price. Um, his fish consists of uh, four glow light tetras, one molly, and one growing ghost shrimp. The light are on for about eight hours a day. He keeps the tank at about uh, 76 degree Fahrenheit, 24 degrees Celsius. Uh, he trims plants every week to keep them looking good. It looks like, I don't know, those front plants look like they could be Italian veil, but I could be wrong. Uh, he uses no fertilizers. And uh, may try a plenum next redo if I need it. Uh, two more tanks to post uh, at a later date. So I want to thank Tom for sending me the pictures. And I'll be waiting for the pictures of your other tanks. Okay, the next pictures are from McWell. Uh, he has a 29-gallon tank. I like 29s a little better than just 20 gallon. It's all, almost if you're going to get a 20 gallon, why not just buy a 29 gallon? A plenum made with six by six inch plates, which you see here, which uh, I've shown in my videos. That's exactly the plates I used in the 90 gallon and in the uh, 40 gallon breeder. And here is his tank. So, how he did it? It's using a plenum. He used a uh, thin layer of kitty litter and laterite. He topped it with a few inches of fluorite substrate. It's only two months old, so it's still getting broken in. Okay. Uh, he's using a Sun Sun canister filter with sponges and BCB bags. Dealing with a little bit of hair algae. Uh, he doesn't say how long his lights are on for. No nitrates with 20 small fish in the tank, along with some mystery snails. Jungle Veil is growing like crazy. Um, he's got a Hager light on for, okay, eight hours a day. Okay, so his photo period is eight hours a day. Um, maybe he may want to cut that down to six or seven. Try, try a little bit less if he seems to be getting algae problems. <clears throat> but I'm I'm thinking that if he's getting some beard algae, I bet you his beard algae is growing on that uh, piece of driftwood he has sitting over there. But anyhow, uh, like the veil, the jungle veil he uses, depending on what jungle veil is, that's going to get very, very tall. If uh, I remember correctly, the jungle veil that a lot of stores sell, it can get like three foot long. Because I've known people to use it in their tanks, and it got long. So anyhow, that's McWell's tank. I want to thank these two gentlemen for sending me pictures of their aquarium and information of how they set it up and what they're using. Uh, it looks like a very nice tank. Both these particular people are using uh, uh, live plants for their aquariums. And uh, so thank you, gentlemen, for sending me these pictures. I hope people can learn from them. And that is it for this video. And thank you very much for watching. And don't forget to subscribe.